Gopala Astrology Channel where the science meets astrology for common man's understanding. Subscribe and stay tuned to this channel for continued astrological updates. Hello, welcome to Gopala Astrology Channel. Today it's going to be a very interesting video which is a hotly discussed topic about Kala Sarpa Dosha. So it's about uh, the remedy as well as the uh, the root causes of all these doshas is explained in this video please stay until the end of the video it's going to be a long and detailed video all right friends let's go to the actual video so uh, the topic is very very interesting kala sarpa dosha and its remedies so many people are scared about kala sarpa dosha they get they get worried that this is going to be a very very blocking point in the career of um, their lives and things like that so but for some reason the, the kala sarpa dosha is related to snake and uh, rahu represents the snake head and uh, kitu represents the snake tail so this is always there and i'm going to explain to you guys one by one uh, and before that, let's try to understand what is this Rahu and what is this Ketu in a very simpler uh, methodology. Okay, basically everybody have gone through the, the the basic subject of physics. In primary school physics, we have understood that when you bring two magnets to the closer vicinity of each other and try to rub, and you can generate electricity. Right? It's the Faraday's law of electricity. That means the magnetic lines of force are there when you rub. When you come nearby and try to rub it, the lines of force are cut and it generates electricity. And the same thing is happening in the cosmos here. You can see that sun, the earth and the moon are three huge magnets. And when they come to the near vicinity and then they are uh, doing these revolutions, what happens it generates a lot of magnetism okay and then the electricity so it's just a simple concept here please understand that if um, if you consider this blue color plane as the plane of earth's revolution around the sun okay the sun is here the earth is revolving around the sun in this white elliptical orbit as it is shown and then it is going in the plane as shown here as a blue color plane Okay, at the same time, around the Earth, we have the revolutions made by the Moon. And you can see the part of that Moon is yellow color elliptical orbit. And it also follows a plane which is shown as gray color plane. Now, wherever this blue color plane and then the gray color plane coincides with each other, it forms what is known as uh, the north and south nodes of the moon. The north node is called Rahu and the south node is called as the Ketu. That's all. It's very, very simple north and south nodes. And these are high concentric magnetic vortices, I can say, magnetic points. Okay, physically, when you take a telescope and take a look at the night sky, you cannot see Rahu and Ketu, but they can be always calculated by mathematical points. And then you can deduce a lot of uh, relationships. Okay, so in literal meaning, our sages told that Rahu always talks about the present life, the desires and the ambitions that we have, whereas Ketu is all about the past lives, repercussions, and you know, you want to be um, isolated from the uh, actual society and you want to go into the spiritual path because you already enjoyed this particular area of your life. Uh, wherever the, the Ketu is being placed in uh, one of the 12 boxes or the 12 houses, okay, and the, the Ketu wants to uh, always uh, separate himself uh, from that particular aspect of life. Now, at least we now know what is Rahu and Ketu. Now we can connect this Rahu and Ketu to the Kala Sarpa Dosha that I'm going to explain, as well as uh, some mythological story here. The mythology, Indian mythology uh, or the Purana stories, they talk about, uh, you know, the churning of oceans by gods and demons. They used a Vasuki snake or the serpent and there was a Meru Parvatam or the mountain. It was supported by the turtle, the Vishnu, the form of a turtle and it, he supported the Meru Parvatam. And then the, the churning of the ocean was done. This is a mythological story. During the churning of the ocean, the nectar or the Amrudam or the, you know, the one, the spirit, the magic potion for immortality came out and Lord Vishnu wanted to give all this nectar to 
only the gods, whereas one demon by name Saimhikeya got disguised himself as a as a god, and he entered into the group of gods, and he took a few drops of uh, Amritam, and immediately the the sun and the moon recognize that there is a demon who is in the form of God and has taken the nectar. This complaint went to Vishnu through sun and moon and immediately the Lord Vishnu took his Vishnu Chakra and he carved the head, you know, as shown here, he carved the head of the demon, the head was separated and the body was separated, the head became the Rahu, the rest of the body which doesn't have the head became Kedu. And that's why the angry Rahu always, uh, he doesn't like sun and moon. He's the one who caused the eclipse. That means during the solar eclipse, he's going to engulf the sun. During the lunar eclipse, he's going to engulf the moon. Uh, okay, these are all the mythological stories and things like that. But I just go by the signs and I explained you what is Rahu Ketu scientifically. Please understand that whenever you understand the presence of these two green dots here, they always form a clear sheet of magnetism around the earth. Okay, and uh, with this background, let's go into what is known as Naga Dosha before understanding what is Kala Sarpa Dosha. There are two types of Doshas actually. Many people always keep coming back to me and, uh, and uh, they need an explanation of what is Naga Dosha and what is Kala Sarpa Dosha. Okay, so Naga Dosha and Sarpa Dosha is one term basically. Naga means it's Sarpa. Okay, Sarpa is a Sanskrit name. Okay, so Naga Dosha is quite uh, a serious matter when compared to Kala Sarpa Dosha. Kala Sarpa Dosha, we can have a remedy. I'm going to explain it to you guys. Okay, but uh, Naga Dosha is a very critical uh, subject to understand. If uh, Rahu or Ketu, which I explained to you, the, the nodes of the moon is present in the horoscope either in the Lagna, that is the ascendant, the second house, the fifth house, seventh or the eighth house any of these placements of rahu and ketu in the horoscope will result in what is known as sarpa dosha let's try to understand a little bit more about it see this is the symbol of rahu rahu is written like this and ketu is written in this form okay so in first house or the second house the lagna or the first, i have taken again uh, a theoretical example of Aries as the Lagna. Your Lagna can be either Taurus, Gemini, any any of these 12 zodiacal signs. And here I have just considered a hypothetical example of Aries or Meshirashi, right? Imagine the person is born in Meshirashi and Rahu or Ketu is present either in the first house or second house, then it becomes the, the Naga Dosha and this type of Naga Dosha is really impacting the, the marriage. It delays the marriage because all about the first house. First house is yourself and second house is the family, right? So these two are affected and then many, many problems can be created in a family life. And if this person marries a bit early in life, before 30, the, the marriage will, will dissolve and then it may uh, result in separation or the divorce. Okay, the second option is when Rahu and Ketu, any or Rahu or Ketu, any of this is present in the fifth house. The fifth house is all about our creativity, children. Okay, so it uh, it creates a lot of delay in the birth of a child. You know, it leads to even abortions because fifth house is all about uh, the childrens and things like that. Okay, and uh, it, it's very very important. Even if the Rahu aspects the fifth house can cause Naga Dosha or the Sarp Dosha and uh, we need to form what is known as Naga Pratishtapana. I'm going to explain it to the towards the end of the video and that is the one which should be done in order to get rid of this uh, Sarpa Dosha with Rahu or Ketu in the fifth house. The next combination is directly the seventh house, seventh house of marriage and family life. There can be a lot of misunderstandings, frequent quarrels between wife and husband. It's always there. It's a day-to-day -day routine things that will keep on popping up every day in the marriage. Okay, the, the husband and wife, they don't understand each other. And all the misunderstandings are caused by this Rahu Ketu. Uh, from the uh, axis of first house and the seventh house, okay? Seventh house is always about marriage and partners, even in the partners, uh, not only the marriage, but also even the business partners, there will be some misunderstanding between each other. The last one I want to explain to you guys is eighth house. 
when the Rahu or Ketu is present in the eighth house, eighth house is all about the health. Okay, health uh, is very, very much indicated there, and there will be frequent illnesses either in uh, in the husband's health or in the wife's health, and even the skin diseases. Skin diseases are very, very commonly seen when this type of Naga dosha or the Sarpa dosha happens. Okay, so uh, any of these combination, the first house, the second house, the fifth house, seventh and eighth, these are very sensitive areas in one's life. If it is present, we will see this happening. Now coming to the Kala Sarpa Dosha, which is quite different from Sarpa Dosha. Okay, Kala means it's the time, duration, right? So it's, it's all about the duration and it's going to be there for a particular specified period of time. And if we are going to do a remedy, we can even reduce it to a greater extent, okay? The, in the soul's journey, this is all common because we are here to pay for our bad debts, okay? And then um, the Kala Sarpa Dosha is fully enhanced by Rahu Ketu, which are the and karmic planets, of course. Okay, so that means to say the Rahu represents the head of the snake and the Ketu represents the tail of the snake. And whenever you see that the, all the planets are engulfed on one side of Rahu Ketu axis, okay, it forms what is known as Kala Sarpadosha. So Kala Sarpadosha is, is quite a serious problem, uh, especially the first 35 years of the person's life will be challenging whatever they try to do and uh, whatever the efforts they put in life they will get only 50 to 60 percent of the results and the people will be very very frustrated okay so uh, later on i will be talking about the remedy how it can be re uh, it can be reduced to a greater extent all right so at least we should know some examples i can show you for example margaret thatcher when she was born on 13th of october 1925 this combination was there in the zodiac okay rahu and ketu was engulfing all the planets on one side you can see this very very clearly so we have hundreds of examples like Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru was born with uh, Kala Sarpadosha. So not everyone will suffer, but uh, it depends on a particular uh, position of Rahu and Ketu. I'm going to explain to you guys, there are 12 different combinations that is possible. Okay, but depending on the position of Rahu and Ketu in 12 houses, we have got different names and different results. Okay, let's try to understand one by one and also Try to understand uh, what is the main difference between Sarpa Dosha and Kala Sarpa Dosha. So Sarpa Dosha, in my opinion, is more serious. Why this? Because it can even affect the person even after the death. Okay, so the whenever the Sarpa Dosha is present in the horoscope, there will be no proper cremation when the person dies. Okay, with this Dosha. And uh, that can happen by accidents, okay? And he may be murdered or he may, the person may commit suicide. It all depends on other combinations, combination, combination, combination in the horoscope. But definitely there will be some unnatural death of the person, okay? So there, be, there could be, uh, for example, the body gets uh, teared into pieces. For example, it happened in the case of... Uh, uh, Ajiv Gandhi, the ex-Prime Minister of India, he was bombed and his body was split into pieces, right? And things like that. So sometimes it may happen an unnatural death, like tsunamis and things like that. And some stranger may completely, a stranger may come and do the, uh, the, the cremations and things like that. So for everything, it depends on the proper position of Rahu Ketu in the horoscope, okay? So that's it. So whereas Kala Sar Dosha, is slightly different it can be hereditary okay it can be passed from generations for example your great grandfather or a grandfather must have done some sins and it has come by generations right so the father has it the grandfather has it and even the son may have it and things like that there is no specific time limit but uh, we can do the remedy more easily in the case of kala sarpa dosha as compared to that of sr dosha Okay, it's very simple to understand. Okay, now let's see some more effects, evil effects of Sarpa Dosha in a way. So if it is in the horoscope of a female, she may have frequent abortions. Conceiving of the baby is very, very difficult for her. Okay, especially I told you about Rahu Ketu present in fifth house. All right, then physically and mentally, if at all a child is conceived and it is born because of some good aspects of other planets like Jupiter or Venus, 
challenged, physically challenged or mentally challenged kids are born. Okay, in the case of male, if they have K2 in the fifth house, they may have impotency problem or the low sperm count and things like that. Okay, late marriages are very, very frequently seen in Naga Dosham. Okay, and then uh, there is a very slow growth of intelligence even the baby is born and uh, if it is having this type of dosham in its own horoscope, its uh, growth will be very slow and you know, they won't be very intelligent students. All right, and uh, frequently, of course, they will get, keep on complaining. I have seen many of my clients uh, who has this dosham. I ask them the question, do you get any nightmares? Do you see any snakes in your dream? Uh, they always tell me, yes, yes, sir. I see a kind of a black snake that comes and I will suddenly get up from my sleep and things like that. Okay, uh, it is possible that uh, if you have any of those uh, placement of Rahu, uh, Rahu Ketu, you may be uh, subject to some black magic and things like that, you know, and you may be even possessed by an evil spirit. It depends on the other positions of the horoscope, other planets in the horoscope. Okay, some uh, STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, kidney stones, etc., etc. is also possible when when Rahu Ketu is present in the eighth house. All right, it is very, very commonly seen. And then the son or daughter rejecting the marriage are becoming, sometimes uh, when, when the Rahu Ketu combination happens in the seventh house, the person can be having a different kind of a sexual orientation. They can be a gay or a lesbian, they will not be straight. And then kids um, uh, always go, they will be a revolting type of a kid. They won't listen to the parents, they run away, they marry a foreigner or something like that. Very unusual practices are seen with the Sarpa Dosha in the horoscope because they cannot get married in a normal way and so there will be some shortcuts here and there you know and uh, uh, frequent hospitalization a lot of money has to be spent on hospitalization when Rahu or Ketu is present in the eighth house all right then let's come to the different combinations which I was telling you there are 12 different types of Kala Sarpa Dosha Okay, the first one is called Ananta Kala Sarpa Dosha. Ananta Kala Sarpa Dosha means when Rahu is present in the first house and Ketu goes to the seventh house. Obviously, they will be always 180 degree opposite to each other. Whenever Ketu is there, uh, sorry, Rahu is there in the first house, Ketu always goes to the seventh house. This is always moving in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so when this Ananta Kala Sarpa Dosha happens, it is there in the first house, Rahu is in the first house. So this makes the very stressful life for the person, for the natal uh, chart, okay, person, it also encourages. Of course, when Rahu is always there in the first house, it aspects the seventh house of marriage. So there will be a lot of uh, arguments and, uh, you know, disturbances in marriage. See, many people will come back to me with this uh, first house Rahu. But still they are married, you know, the couple are married. The, the reason could be there would be a very positive influence of uh, a Shubhagraha like Jupiter or uh, or uh, even Venus for that matter. So they will be, the husband and wife will be staying in the same house under the same roof, but they may not uh, have a union regularly. You know, they will, they will just uh, stay in the same house and they don't care for each other in front of uh, outsiders they will think that these are uh, these these two people are husband and wife but in reality they may not be okay so different possible combinations is is happening all right second one is called kulika sarpa, kala sarpa dosha so what is this kulika kala sarpa dosha and the Rahu goes to the second house and Ketu goes to the eighth house. This is possible. So second house, I told you, it's all the family, the, the, the wealth, you know, the stored wealth is all seen in the second house. And please do not mistake that it is only Taurus. This is again a hypothetical example I have taken for easiness, easy way of understanding. It, your Lagna can be anywhere. It can be Taurus, it can be Lagna. Lagna of Gemini, it can be anywhere, okay, but the combination is always the same, all right, so financial issues are very well seen when Rahu goes to the second house and uh, they will never get along with the family and uh, sometimes for good they will even go out of the country, motherland, okay, so Kulik Kala Sarpa Dosha. Next one is called Vasuki Kala Sarpa Dosha. In this case, Rahu is placed in the third house, the Ketu goes to the a ninth house. So when this combination happens, please understand the third house represents siblings. The relationship with siblings is going to be really a problem. 
third house also represents the way we think okay the thought process and our writing you know everything is affected when rahu goes to the third house and this person will have a lot of stresses uh, stress in their uh, career and uh, they may have or they may even suffer from hypertensions all right the next one is called shankapal kalasarpa dosha so what is this shankapal kalasarpa dosha when rahu goes to the fourth house and ketu goes to the 10th house this possible combination happens and in this case fourth house is what fourth house is all about motherland relationship with the 10th house represents the relationship with the father whereas the fourth house shows the relationship with the mother that means the relationship with the parents is going to be very very stressful you know the parents want to say something to the children who are having this dosha they will never listen the they will have a different frequency and they will never match and things like that and for good if uh, if this evil planet rahu is in the fourth house it will also bring the person to a foreign land and he cannot stay in the motherland uh, whenever the dasha of uh, rahu comes in all right so uh, the next combination is called padma kala sarpa dosha So in the padma kala sarpa dosha we have rahu going into the fifth house and ketu going to the 11th house so when this combination happens please understand that fifth house represents education and children okay so this will have very serious consequences on the person's ability to have uh, the education i'm talking about the uh, academical education and uh, even the romantic life will be fully afflicted okay and um, the health of the children okay, the person who is having this dosha the health of the children also will be seriously affected they will be frequently bringing their children to see doctor and things like that all right so that is the one combination the next one is called maha padma kala sarpa dosha so when this happens the rahu goes to the 6th house and ketu is in the 12th house please understand that whatever i am explaining these combinations all the planets are surrounded on one side only then this uh, dosha happens if the planets are evenly distributed on either sides it's it's no more a dosha okay so that's the point so when rahu is in the 6th house of enemies uh, in a way what happens 6th house is the house of maternal uncles and relatives that means 4th house is mother and the 3rd house is the siblings of the mother it will be a very stressful relationship with the siblings of the mother like mama ji all these people may have maternal uncles and maternal aunts they will have troubled relationship with this person okay so uh, in a good way bad planet in the bad house is raj yoga when rahu goes to the 6th house it can also solve many uh, litigation problems that is another positive point also is there in this combination okay bad planet in the bad house gives raj yoga next one is called shaka kala sarpa dosha what is this so when rahu goes to the now is the opposite right rahu has entered the next Uh, level here it goes to the 7th house and ketu comes to the 1st house when this combination happens it is exactly the same marital troubles the problem with the partners and the business uh, both the life partner as well as the business partner the misunderstanding happens when this alignment comes in the 1st and 7th house axis either rahu in the 1st house or ketu in the 7th house it is exactly the same combination okay the next one is a little bit more serious one it is called karkotaka kala sarpa dosha so what is this karkotaka kala sarpa dosha here the ketu goes to the second house and rahu is moving to the eighth house see eighth house is a very very important house as far as longevity of a person is concerned health of a person is concerned so whenever a negative planet like rahu goes to the 8th house it causes serious problems in the health of a person and uh, there will be uh, since ketu is getting into the second house of family the person will be always secretive and he will move out of the family he finds happiness with some friends who are who may be a little bit negative in nature okay they may not have good friends and the health of this person is always afflicted he may get some uh, diseases in the uh, in the private parts and things like this because eighth house represents the private parts all right 
the next combination is called shankachuda kalasarpa dosha so what exactly is this so when when the rahu goes to the sagittarius or uh, danu rashi and then the ketu comes to gemini or mithuna rashi so this possible combination happens so rahu is ninth house is all about uh, religious uh, and then a belief system of a person so when rahu goes there it will it will cause actually it is not that bad the person will move to the foreign land again ninth house is all about foreign distance journeys but uh, he will be devoid of the fatherly love the father always misunderstands this person because ninth house is also known as the house of father and this person will have a lot of arguments with the father he doesn't agree whatever the father says because he will be this person will be more intelligent than his own father and the, and for good reason he will go out of the motherland okay the gatak alasar dosha so this means the rahu goes to the 10th house of profession and then the ketu goes to the domestic happiness house or fourth house so here there will be a lot of dissatisfaction in the job whenever the rahu enters the 10th house and um, he may gain some political power the person will be interested in politics he may get into the politics at the second half of the life because 10th house is also representing your karma in the second half of life so nobody will have even a clue until the boy is uh, 30 boy or girl is 30 years old after that they will develop an interest in politics because 10th house is all about politics and the karmic things you know in a bigger political power can be gained rahu becomes uh, more powerful in the 10th house okay there is some benefic uh, uh, benefic uh, results of gatak kala sarpa dosha as well all right so vishadhara kala sarpa dosha what is this this is the next combination then in the rahu goes to the 11th house and of course ketu goes to the 5th house so in this combination what happens is 5th house is all about education if education may be affected and 11th house is elder siblings and also the large friend group friend circle okay that may be affected and um, there will be some issues in terms of finance as well because the incoming gains is all seen through <clears throat> the 11th house of incoming gains okay that will be afflicted and the last combination is quite serious as well it is known as sheshanaga kala sarpa dosha so that means all the way the, the rahu goes to the 12th house and ketu will be in the 6th house so this will be the person may have serious health issues they may have early death the longevity will be afflicted okay the reason is uh, the rahu aspects the eighth house that means rahu is similar to jupiter it has got fifth house aspect it has got ninth house aspect in addition to the seventh house usual aspect so sitting in the 12th house uh, here the rahu is going to have impact on eighth house so it is going to aspect the longevity of the person and the person may have some uh some unusual deaths okay so there will be some marital relationship problem as well there will be some gain after the death the person dies then his name and fame becomes more profound in the world okay but when he is living he may not get the credit of the the hard work that he might have done all right so these are the 12 possible combinations of uh, different kala sarpa doshas all right so now i have told you that uh, the next topic would be how long how long i will be suffering the question always my clients will come back to me and ask me is that how long will i have this kala sarpa dosha effects so out of all the combinations that i showed you there is uh, 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 there are six of them which are more severe serious they are called savya kala sarpa doshas and for them i have given the timings here the savya kala sarpa dosha happens when it is in the in the possible combination of ananta kala sarpa dosha that is when rahu ketu is in the first and seventh house axis where where the rahu is placed in the lagna itself so this will go on for 27 years the first 27 years of the person's life will be very challenging of course all these are going to happen if you don't take any remedy and corrective actions okay once you take the remedy and corrective actions the ill effect of all this uh, kala sarpa dosha will be reduced all right next one is kulika kala sarpa dosha it can go up 33 years you know 
and then vasuki kala sarpa dosha will be there for 6 years the shankapala kala sarpa dosha can last until 42 years padma kala sarpa dosha goes way almost a quarter of the life in fact 48 years and mahapadma kala sarpa dosha is is way too long 54 years the person has to suffer so better you get the remedies done faster and then you can you can you can enjoy the life all right so what are the the kala sarpa dosha remedies of course there are i can list many of them you can you can do many of them praying to lord shiva is 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 the key point here okay you can donate the milk to the temple and then you know you can do the meditation for around half an hour in the name of uh, lord shiva and uh, there are so many other points om namah shivaya if you keep saying one or eight times in front of shivling every day it's going to reduce your kala sarpa dosha drastically okay there are different jyotirlinga kshetras or places in india if you just visit any of the 12 of them it brings down the kala sarpa dosha to a significant level but out of all these things i would like to just emphasize i have highlighted in yellow here i would just talk about the kukke subramanya temple visit in karnataka in india uh, this is mainly for um, for getting rid of all type of possible combinations which i told you you know for the kala sarpa dosha it is a very famous temple and uh, this is known as uh, kukke shri subramanya temple it is in the uh, southern part of india in the state of karnataka okay it is on the more towards the mangalore or the west coast of india okay so it is in the uh, in the uh, western ghats hills it is in a very hilly area it's a very old temple okay very traditional place and the priests or the brahmins perform certain prayers and rituals so there are three main um, uh, uh, pujas or the performance uh, or the prayers that has to be done whenever we have any of the combinations 12 combinations of kala sarpa dosha okay and even sarpa dosha both can be getting relieved when you go to this temple that's why i have emphasized more on this remedial measures okay so i have sent many of my clients to this place the first puja actually it takes about um, two days prayers actually and then uh, the first puja is called sarp samskara puja so with this uh, i would like to give you some background of why this sarp samskara or shraddham the tithi is done see for some reason i explained to you that rahu ketu is nothing but the snake's head and tail so this particular dosha or the combination happens uh, we we say that the person in his past life has killed a snake okay and that snake soul for some reason was not given a proper um, samskaram after its death okay and that snake soul is is not having the liberation it doesn't have the peaceful transfer of its own life to the next body so it will be hanging around and then it will travel along with you this is the belief system that we have been uh, told by the sages okay so this pers- if this kala sarpa dosha happens the snake soul gets embedded in the aura of this person and it stays so whenever this person wants to make some progress and all that the snake soul is going to come and prevent the uh, the the progress of the person because it's trying to take a kind of revenge because it was killed by this man or a woman in the past life okay so the person would have died he has killed the snake he has forgotten about that instance he has died and he is taken the next birth but in this birth he or she is facing a lot of problems so for that uh, we have to do what is known as sarp samskar puja so what the priest will do is they will draw a rangoli or the artwork of the snake snake god and they will do the lot of afanam mantrams the, the prayers will be done and they will rahu ketu in the form of a uh, uh, you know in they will make a form of the snake for rahu ketu uh, in a in a chapati floor or something like that and then they will they will uh, bring that snake soul to that place and then they will liberate that snake soul they will do a homam which is known as ashlesha bali puja ashlesha bali puja is to energize that soul they will give the food 
Bali is giving the food actually. So they will energize that snake soul and then it gets liberated, it gets isolated from the, the person's uh, aura. All right. After these two procedures are done, the last one is known as Naga Pratishtapana. What is Naga Pratishtapana? Imagine there is a dead man or a dead snake in its name. You know, for respecting that dead snake soul, we have to build it home. If you if you happen to go to South India, you can see a lot of a lot of uh, uh, banyan trees, and during uh, in the in the base of beneath of the banyan tree, you can find a lot of snake uh, uh, stone uh, images like this. You know, idols like this. What are these idols? These are the idols which represents the dead snake soul you know and as a mark of respect they will put it near the banyan tree so that every day it gets attention of the people the people do the prayers and things like that and this the soul is respected so that it gets liberated and it will go to the next yoni and things like that so this is the detailed explanation of all the possible combinations of kala sarpa doshas and also the naga dosha so both combinations I have explained today. I hope it was uh, uh, it was interesting for all of you. If you have any questions, you can always come back to me. All right. So this is the end of the video. Please subscribe to this channel so that I get more encouragement and I will be making more and more educational videos. Thank you very much.